Hello, uh, my name is Dave Olila. I'm the Soil Health Specialist with South Dakota Soil Health Coalition. And today we want to talk about maintenance on your no-till drill. And with us today we have Bruce Bruner, a long-time farmer, a career farmer, and in the last nine years has operated and maintained a uh, John Deere 1590 no-till drill. So we'll let Bruce talk about some of the maintenance concerns and issues with uh, making sure that we uh, maintain accurate seed depth as well as seeding rate. So Bruce, it's all yours. Thanks Dave. So, so we're going to start out with uh, the main parts to depth control and uh, proper seed placement. And I've kind of got things lined up here the way they are on the drill. And as you see here, we have an old disc. This is very, very important, the size of the disc. A brand new disc is 18 inches in diameter, which is set like this. So if you can see the difference, we've got, this one is 15. This is an old one that we took off. So according to the book, we're supposed to change at about 17 inches. And that's very important because that, if we keep that size proper, then this seed boot will, take, will last a lot longer and it will seed a lot better in the, in the uh, furrow. So the seed boot wear is the next thing. Um, this measurement should be 11 inches and on this one it's 10. So that says the seed boot is worn down to the point where it needs to be replaced. That's why it's laying on the table instead of on the drill. The next component then is this little seed flap that go goes right on here like this on the back of the seed boot that is right over the top of the seed as it drops into the ground to keep it from bouncing out of the ground um, I don't know if you've ever watched behind your drill especially if you're going kind of at a high speed you'll notice seed on both sides of the furrow a lot of times this keeps that from happening then we go to the depth control and this is a, a each one of these notches is a quarter of an inch difference in the depth control and that goes along with this. This is a depth control rod and I don't know if you can see this or not but if you see the wear on these notches that is big time proper, uh, proper emplacement of the, the seed because a little bit of a gap here can make a lot of difference down here at the bottom of the seed boot as far as the depth uh, of the seed. So it's very important. And once it starts to chatter here, then it wears bigger hole and bigger hole and bigger hole. These are reversible so that you can keep um, good notches all the time. These here, I should have said, we normally replace these every year because if you can see, this is almost got a point enough to poke through your finger because it's laying in the soil, running in the soil. This is not a John Deere. This is a, we get this as an aftermarket because it's shaped better to fit into the seed slot. And this is the uh, adjustment arm that fits, there's a rod that goes through the disc and through the whole mechanism and it, it oscillates like this inside these slots. This slot right here fits on that shaft and if, those, if this bolt isn't kept tight and this gap isn't kept at the right uh, distance to keep it tight, then this starts to wear as well. And this one here, um, you can't see it probably, but I can feel there is a wear spot in there. And then you can't keep it tight, so this thing starts wobbling, causing this to chatter more, causing everything to not work properly as far as depth control. So these, these all go together as far as keeping the, the proper depth on your um, okay, now here we are on the machine itself, and I've got one of the gauge wheels off. And this is one of the depth gauge wheels, and it goes right on there. And that needs to be really, really close to the disc all the time. And there's shims that you can take in and put out to keep that distance right. But we try to keep ours running right almost against the disc to keep it clean all the time. And this is not, uh, uh, this doesn't come from John Deere, this isn't factory. This is a poly uh, 
it's not rubber like John Deere's is. This is made out of some kind of poly material. But as I rotate it, I don't know if you can see that, Dave. Yes. As, as I rotate it, you'll see there's no wear on this. And this is a five-year-old we, uh, wheel. The rubber ones by now, running in trash and stubble and all that, would have wear and maybe have pieces ripped out, actually. So we've got these on because they're uh, very durable. Plus, they're narrower, so they, uh, they're easier to keep the depth adjustment because they don't track on a wide surface like the old ones do. Now we're looking at the rear end of the drill and we're looking at all the pieces basically that I had laying on the table plus a few more. This is the entire mechanism all hooked together. As I was talking about the bevel on the, the disc, you can see here. Um, this is a disc that's been on here for a year now and it's still got at least half or maybe even more than half of the bevel left. These are some special hard surfaced discs that we bought uh, this past year and it seems like they're well worth their money because they've, they've worn well. There's about 2,000 acres on these discs. Moving on then to uh, the, some of the other parts. Um, here's the adjuster I was talking about. And it's, this is how you adjust the depth. But I, here's the play I was talking about. If you can see, can you see? See when your notches get worn out, that's how much play you can get. And that makes a difference of probably a quarter of an inch in depth when you get down to the seed boot. And this is the closing wheel that runs behind uh, the opener as the seed drops. And if you can see down in there that little blue tab that I was showing you, that's where that sits. This runs right above that. And then um, as you move back, we have the closing wheel. This is not John Deere standard. Here, here's a, I don't know if you can see it. John Deere standard is, can you see that? Mm -hmm. It's, John Deere standard is a solid closing wheel and we've opted to have, um, we put these on, we've had these on for several years now and we like them better than the regular closing wheel because they're called a, a they break up the crust is what they do and they're called a crumbler and we like the way they close the uh, gap as as you move along okay now i'm going to show some wear that's pretty important and if you can see this um i'm going to move the boot up the seat boot up and down that means there's some wear on the point where it's hooked together up underneath up back up in here and uh, on this particular machine we're going to have to do some uh, repair work to tighten that up and there's a kit that is available not through John Deere but um, online that will tighten that up and then it will be running like a new machine again down there and then this uh, closing wheel is if you see it's tapered they didn't used to be tapered but now they're tapered so they fit right down in the in the seed slot so it's important to keep everything in line if you can see there's no movement here but when these bushings start to get sloppy this thing will move back and forth and not stay on track so there's bushings inside here same thing with the closing or the packing wheel there's bushings down inside here that need to be replaced to, to tighten it back up and to keep it on track and then uh, the whole unit clear up to the front. Can you see back there, Dave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you see back there, that pin, there's bushings in there, and they will get sloppy, and, and this this whole thing will have a tendency to move back and forth. Then you're you're off track. You're never on on right. So it's quite a job, but eventually every machine is going to have to have that done to keep everything tight. If, if you're only planting 150 or 200 acres a year, I guess I wouldn't worry too much about it because it's quite a bit of work and it's expensive, but in our situation, we plant more acres. So uh, this is the shaft I was talking about where that gauge wheel is hooked onto right here. And that's where you, that needs to be kept tight as well. 
Okay, one thing that I failed to point out before was with this particular machine, you're, you have down pressure on it all the time. So it's very important that you don't try to turn very sharp with the discs in the ground unless you take the pressure off. And then you don't want to turn too much because that's what causes the bushings to wear faster. And then you have your problem with not tracking again. Um, then on, on, on greasing, there's three grease lurks on each unit. So if I were you, I'd get a grease gun with a long hose on it and ho hopefully a battery operated one because it's quite a job greasing. Um, this one here, and then there's one underneath here. You have to move this to get at it. It's right down in here. Those are 50 hour greasers according to the book. And we try to stay on that. This one here goes through that shaft I was talking about. The book says uh, once a year to put a few shots in there, but um, I try to grease about two shots in there every 350 acres or so, because if you ever have one of them freeze up, it is a mess. So I try to keep them greased, but more than two shots, you would pop the seal and then you get dirt in there. So I just try to put a couple shots in there every 300 to 350 acres and so far we've had no seizing or anything like that and as you see it really operates freely. When it gets tight you either have to use a crust and rinse or you put it in a press that means you take it all out. <laughs> okay one thing we failed to discuss so far is the down pressure mechanism on this particular machine. It's uh, totally hydraulic controlled and we have right here the gauge that shows the down pressure and then you have a, an adjuster here that can tweak it to put more down pressure or less down pressure. You need to run the machine with enough down pressure so you cannot turn those uh, gauge wheels at all by hand when they're in the ground. Um, sometimes you get, get enough pressure on it then they will kind of float and bounce and it won't get the right amount of penetration for depth control. Um, I always try to run a little extra down pressure and they say especially in dusty conditions that keeps the dust from getting into the bearing, inner bearings which are sealed bearings but dust gets in there and mixes with the grease and then it, it will tend to freeze them up at times and that's as I said before that's a pain to get them things in those. So. Well we've talked about a number of components to the drill that really impact the uh, quality of the seating in regards to how the uh, different pieces wear out and how we should keep them adjusted. Bruce, do you want to summarize some of that and, and any other points you want to bring up? Yeah, I'll, I can summarize. Uh, I think first, oh, I've been thinking here on one of the things I want to stress is this is not a grain drill. This is a preci precision planting drill and it's really not made for places where you've worked up the soil or whatever even though we use it there. Um, I prefer to have it on solid ground and use it as a total no-till drill. And I have people tell me they don't like the junky look of the field but folks the junk is what is a friend because it, uh, it melts down and, and decomposes and it covers the top of your soil and protects the soil and provides nitrogen. So no-till is no-till. No two ways about it. We can plant in all kinds of conditions. I've planted in a loose do soil, which, because of the weight of this machine, you have to be careful. It has a tendency to push loose soil, and so you've got to really be careful with the, the, the down pressure settings. But I've also planted in up to probably waist high, almost dense uh, weeds and trash and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't make any difference as long as you can see where you're going. You know. The key to this thing is it makes such a small slit. If you're planting small seeds, like grasses or whatever, you can't find them. You can dig and hardly ever find them, but trust me, they come up because they're in the ground. So. Uh, well, I guess to over summarize everything we talked about previously is the optimum planting conditions are never there, basically. But the main thing with the machine is to keep everything tight and keep everything, um, the disc, keep them in good shape as well and, and you'll have very little trouble planting it up. This is just one of the no-till machines on the market. There's several of them I don't know much about. 
those other ones are kind of kind of like this one that we've had in a long time. I don't, I don't have two of them, but um, they all work. We're just familiar with this one. I like how it works. And, and, uh, such a narrow slit. The key to this whole thing is don't mess up the slit. Just plant the ground. So, any other questions? Well, less disturbance is certainly important, and you have to have good tools to make that work. And that's that's what I've learned. If we don't keep our equipment in good shape, then our um, chances of success start to decline. Um, anything you want to share with them about it? anything else that's come to mind? Well, no, I think we talked about, you know, the, the number of acres makes a whole lot of difference as to how you maintain your machine. Um, if you're only doing 100 or 200 acres, it's hardly cost effective to spend five or six hundred dollars to maintain, but in our situation, we have to keep replacing parts. So, uh, with a 15-foot machine, that's, and 2,000 acres, that's like, what, 6,000 on a 35 foot machine. So, when people talk about not having to service their machines, it's some big ones. Yeah, it's a lot of passes. Yeah. A lot of wear and tear. Um, it comes down to the cost. Yes. Yep. The big one costs a whole lot more than this yeah. one. Plus, down here on the irrigation where we do a lot of work, the big one's not effective. It's too many narrow gates.